Welcome everyone. Uh, today we are going to do a pick a card reading. Um, pick a pal. Pick a reading actually. So there's going to be three different readings that you can choose from. One, two, or three. Uno, dos, tres. Um, this is really what I'm looking for in this reading is who's coming into your life and really what are they bringing? Are they bringing love? Are they bringing heartache? Um, and something new that I'm doing is I added in um, a past life card also. So that, something is telling me that some of you are connected in a past life. So I thought, well, let's bring out, let's put a past life card in each one. Um, and let's just see what happens. So this can be, of course, someone returning to your life. This Now, when I say returning to your life, again, it could be past life love that um maybe you've come together in this lifetime or you haven't yet it doesn't mean you won't you know what i mean like i feel like some things are predestined and this may be one of those things so again this is a type of reading where you really want to trust your intuition you know i read through my spirit guides who connect to your guides so definitely feel free to ask for signs of confirmation you know, even like taking a moment, closing your eyes and just picturing like one, two or three. Uno, dos or tres. What are your guides? What number are they showing you? And then trusting that. And by the way, as I say that, I do want to say that more than one reading may resonate. Actually, a lot of times when I do pick a card reading, um, at the end, it feels like it tells one big story. So, you know, if more than one pal resonates, I hate to call him a pal, if more than one reading resonates with you, you know, don't worry about that. Um, but definitely trust your intuition. This is that type of reading where, you know, and that's one of the reasons why I do this is to help you learn how to trust your intuition. Um, so again, we are going to use, I'll tell you what I, um, and by the way, I used to do the shuffling online, but it's, it just takes so much time. And I feel like you trust me now. I don't look at the cards. I have no clue what we're about to unveil. Um, but that's the way I like it. So we're going to use the psychic tarot. We're going to use the good tarot. We're going to use the tarot of dreams. We're going to use a past life oracle. We're going to use the light seers tarot. And then we're going to use the romance, um, the romance angels oracle. So that will be for each. Each has the same amount. Um, so let's just quiet our minds. Again, who's coming in for you? And what are they bringing? And I'm going to try to be as clear and detailed as I can. Like, you know, I'm hoping our guides are going to give us real clarity in this reading. So let's go ahead and just calm our minds. Let's go with the flow. And let's officially open this reading. So we're going to start with reading number one. Let's bring these up here. Actually, let's bring them over here. So I'm going to give myself plenty of room. I'm going to bring the lid down. And um, and by the way, I am going to clarify with the Gilded Churro for each reading. So we'll put those right there. And at the end, I may bring out Mother Mary over each reading, too. So we'll see. We'll see how it goes. But let's go ahead and begin. So for those who picked reading number one, hmm, we start with the Ace of Wands. Passion ignited. You know what I love about the Ace of Wands? It can be inspired action. You know, it looks like her heart chakra is being activated. Um, but I often read this as inspired action. It's like your guides are going to help guide you um, probably to each other. If this is talking about two people coming together, we have, well, hello world. 
Interesting. So this is a new chapter that's opening up. And I love that the Ace of Wands is behind that. Because again, it's like the inspiration to take those steps. It's almost like taking on the fool's energy and the willingness to trust my intuition. I feel like your heart chakra is being activated. And it feels to me like this is probably the time. Like this is the time when something is meant to happen. We have the six of wands. This is victory and success. You know, what I love about this energy is this is really where I feel we're taking our wisdom, our knowledge, the things that we have learned in life, and we're helping others. And, you know, I feel like that alone brings you good karma. You know, that alone brings you good karma. This also makes me feel like whoever is coming in is someone that you can look up to. Other people look up to. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if you both, like, you know, I don't want to say do similar things, but if both of you, in a way, I kind of feel like both of you have a spotlight, but maybe for different reasons. Though, again, maybe though in the same field. Interesting. Okay. Past life, we have wisdom. Wisdom. Connecting to the Ace of Wands. Looks like a unicorn. You know, I feel like what this is saying is some of you are, are connecting to a past life energy. And um, definitely feels like it's serving you. You know, I also feel like in a past life, you may have gone through some difficult energies. Um, you know, you could have had a difficult life, even a difficult love life. But I feel like this is saying is you have the ability and you may not even know this. You may just, you know, it may just be this feeling you have of like you meet someone and it's like, hmm, you just feel very familiar to me. Okay, wisdom. The light seers, mm, the empress, beautiful. Um, so the empress, you know, this is the mother figure, number one to some of you. Could be single, like a single mother or a single father. But this is also, um, you know, the empress is someone who has lived a lot of life. And it would make sense that I felt like for some of you, the spotlight is also on you. And it doesn't have to mean like, you know, the world spotlight, but just whatever you do in the world. It's like your wisdom of your past life experiences seem to be following you in this lifetime. And again, the world is signifying a new chapter. And it's a 21, which equals to a three, the same as the Empress, 33. And you know why I always point that out is because I feel like I have a lot of people who have a master number 33 for their life path. But this is someone who, um, it's interesting because I feel like she is reminiscing like in her dreams, like she's connecting to someone in her dreams. And, you know, I definitely feel like a past life here. Um. So this is someone who has learned through her life experiences. You know, she's been through it. I feel like the Empress has walked the path of all the queens. Um, but what she's come out of it is wisdom. So it almost feels like you're living up to what your soul really wanted to accomplish in this lifetime. You know, one of the things I feel like our soul, there's a lot of things our soul wants to accomplish. This is someone who's very creative, uh, very giving, loving, nurturing, but powerful, strong. This is someone who does receive a lot of epiphanies. And, you know, we all do. But this is someone who definitely, like, gives birth to those ideas. Or even what it, I just feel like someone is dreaming. And when I'm dreaming, I'm connecting. 
And then mm, very soon, very soon, the romance angels clearly decide what you want so that it comes to you now. Very soon. And that makes sense with the world being here because it is literally the next chapter that's opening up in your world. And you know what I love about the world's energy? To me, the way I read it, it's a very, very spiritual time. You know, um, at least it's going to give you a reason to maybe even say that like, wow, I can't believe that, you know, we can actually connect to past life love, but we can. It's like this. It's like the Empress is about to give birth. Soon. And. I definitely feel two people are connecting. Um. You know, in this reading, I kind of feel like you may not have met this person yet. Um, but I still feel that there is a connection between the two of, excuse me, between the two of you. And I also feel um, that there's some things in your life, you know, some accomplishments that your soul wanted to have that has nothing to do with love. You know, it's like the things the the things that I wanted to do in this lifetime um, and accomplishing, you know, this is the energy of victory. So whatever it is, like my ideas, the epiphanies that are sent to me, I definitely feel like this person goes with the flow or has learned to go with the flow and um, it feels like they are successful, even if they're just beginning. And this connection to someone that I feel, again, you know, I'm saying like through your dream system, but we don't always know that. You know, you could wake up and be like, that was a strange dream. If you're having those type of dreams, what I would do is write them down. Because it may be, they, those dreams may be giving you clues. I also feel like someone here may be like very busy in life you know, doing the things that they really want to accomplish. And therefore, you know, I feel like your guides are saying, well, the best time for us to reach you is really during your sleeping hours because during your waking hours, you have a lot going on. You know, and it's inter interesting too, I know I say that a lot, but um, because I feel, again, that this person that you're going to be connecting to, I feel they are successful. I feel you are successful or you're on your way. And I also feel like your understanding that you are planting these seeds of intention. It's almost like you're telling the universe, I'm ready now. But I feel like the universe is saying, we know you're ready. And it's coming very soon. And then the power of your intention, right? Because this is saying, clearly decide what you want. To me, that means plant those seeds. Plant those seeds. And connected to the past life. Hmm. But here's the thing. I feel like you don't have to worry a lot. Because this feels like something is just going to happen naturally. And I feel like like-minded energy. Again, let's put it this way. I feel like both people here are someone who cares about the underdog. You know, cares about their fellow man, their fellow woman. Um, feels good when they're giving. You know, it feels like I don't do something just for the money. I do it because it reminds me of what I do in Tarot. I do it because, 
you know, it makes me feel good to help others. But it doesn't mean that money is not part of it. It just, I don't feel like that's the reason why I do it. So I feel like your heart chakra is being, you know, activated because this chapter is getting ready to open. So let's go ahead and take the Gilded Tarot over this. All right. It's interesting I'm seeing the V in the V. Um, for some of you, you know, hmm, I was going to say, hmm, this could be like I'm seeing July, but I'm also seeing June. Now, someone may have a June or July birthday. And it could be either or, but for some reason, I'm picking that up. All right, so let's see. We have the Nine of Pentacles. Wow, that's exactly what I was feeling. So this is sex, uh, successful self-employment. Also the card of Virgo. Um, you know, it is a nine. So I feel like this is talking about someone who's single. But also someone who, and I kind of feel like it's both of you. Um, so I feel like my work means a lot to me. Again, what I do in the world, it means a lot to me. What I love about the Nine of Pentacles is it really talks about a harvest um, from your hard work, seeing that harvest. But I also feel like it's singular. And then it's right next to the ace, which is here, a one. Kind of makes me feel like, eh, am I adding someone else in? But it does definitely signifies what I was feeling, where I feel both are successful in, you know, in their own right. We have, well, two of wands. So two of wands to me is saying yes um it's saying yes but it's me just taking a step forward in it to me it also signifies because it's coming over the world what type of path you're about to walk down so the path of the wands well passion um inspiration and coming over the world you know, it's like single, but then I'm connecting to someone and you are, you are gaining that wisdom from a previous lifetime. And by the way, I don't feel like it's just relating to love. I also feel like it's relating to what you do in the world. Like somehow you were able to extract that wisdom. But now I feel like, okay, well, this is a new path that's opening up. Doesn't mean, you know, let's say I have my own business. Doesn't mean like I'm not going to still have my own business. But now I'm ready to add something else in. The Ten of Swords. And then we have the King of Wands. King of Wands can be a, an Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. But it doesn't have to be. I'm just going to take, look at this, a six of cups, and I'm going to take one more. And we have the nine of swords. Interesting, we have the ten of swords with the nine of swords right below it. You know, I feel like what this is saying is it's either you or this person or both of you who are helping people who, you know, um, the ten of swords to me, it can be like a repeat pattern. Um, it's like taking dagger after dagger after dagger in the back. And it can be 
where the energy turns submissive, where I just accept it. You know, it's like saying where I expect good things to happen and therefore they do. Well, here I'm almost expecting bad things to happen and therefore I do. But here's the thing. I don't feel like this is you. I feel like this is you and them who are helping people to overcome this type of energy. You know, people who, um, where fear can, you know, in a way I feel like get in the way of helping me to manifest the type of life I want. You have the Six of Cups right here. So Six of Cups is, you know, treasured memories. But this is about love. So I feel like this could potentially talk about someone you already know. Yet again, something told me to add in the past life readings. So, you know, we're combining them like past life, current life. And I kind of feel here you have had lifetimes together before. And I also feel that this person and you for them also, by the way, like I'm like, think of both sides of the coin um, because the Empress is like, she's receiving this particular epiphany. Her heart chakra is being activated and the Empress knows that, okay, if my heart chakra is being activated, it's being activated for a reason. And interesting, the person in the Ace of Wands also has their eyes closed. You know, it's like this inner knowing. Well, I do feel like, you know, you'll have that feeling of, hmm, I feel like I already know you. Six of Cups can certainly represent someone in this lifetime. But again, I want to, I still feel like it's connected also to a past lifetime. If this is someone of this lifetime, though, I want to say... I don't feel like there is anguish or heartache, you know, so it could represent friend that maybe I didn't even know was a soulmate. You know what I mean? Um, but again, as I'm moving along in my life, creating my business, creating, and I'm saying my business doesn't have to be like, you know, self-employment, but you're doing well in the nine of pentacles. This is where you feel very comfortable standing on your own two feet. You know, I feel like there is never a better time for love to enter. When you're feeling good and strong within yourself, you're allowing yourself to feel the wisdom of the past lives. And, you know, not only do I feel like, like a lover is coming forward from a past life, I also feel the wisdom of what you do. You know, you could have had like, like your interest could have been piqued about something and you decided to follow that. And the next thing you know, here you are in a different life. You know, now you have maybe your own business. You're doing something that makes you feel good. And I definitely feel the energy of wanting to help others to feel good at the same time. Um, you know, it makes sense that the King of Wands would show up also because, again, we are starting to move down the Two of Wands energy, passion, desire, action-oriented, the Ace of Wands right before that, guidance. You know, it's it reminds me of... Um, of spirit who I feel like often works by, you know, at this, at like right in the moment, I get this inspiration to like take a left instead of a right, um, you know, go here instead of there. And lo and behold, I meet someone and this feels like it opens up. Like it opens up pretty quickly because I feel like there's going to be a recognition. Maybe the first thing you may say to each other is like, wow, like we do, like we both do something very similar. I feel like you'll feel each other's heart because again, I feel this person 
is very compassionate, as I feel you are also. And I definitely feel this person is helping others to overcome some of the things that they themselves have been through. And I feel that for you also. Hmm. The only thing, I don't even want to say of a negative nature, but the only thing I feel like maybe a little warning is the Nine of Swords. And the Nine of Swords, you know, this could be um, where, well, first of all, I could be afraid to fall in love again. But I feel like this type of love, it's just going to happen anyway. You know what I mean? Like, you may be afraid to fall in love. But I feel like the feelings will just be, you know, almost undeniable. It doesn't have to mean that we move directly into love. Who knows? Maybe we decide to collaborate. Maybe we just start talking about what we do for a living. But I feel like those feelings start to arise or arise anyway. So, you know, this is about unnecessary worry, the Nine of Swords. And it's coming over very soon. So don't worry about that. And, you know, and I feel like really in this reading, I don't feel like you have to put any, um, what's the word I want to use? Like, I feel this is about going with the flow because I feel the guides, your guides, their guides are going to help each of you just be at the right place at the right time. Let go of the worry. And that worry may be like when. When's it going to happen? Well, it says very soon. You know, what I would say in this reading is how do you feel in your life? Do you feel, you know, the Nine of Pentacles can be a very abundant energy, but it doesn't have to be. It just to me means like I feel comfortable standing on my own two feet you know it's, it's like saying i don't really feel like i have to have someone in my life but i feel like i now want someone in my life and you may have collaborated in a past life like you may have done something together and that may be why these similarities will pop up you know like through conversation and I could definitely see these two collaborating, you know, making like each of them helping each other in what they do. And um, because I feel like we're doing the same thing, but in different ways. So we're both helping others. We both care. You know, I love the energy of this person because I feel like this is someone who's very empathetic and very giving and does want to help others to overcome certain challenges. And that's the same thing the Empress feels. And, you know, one more clue is I feel like your inner child will be activated also. So like this, like this giddy feeling. Um, even like this nervous laughter I'm feeling. Someone out there, when they get nervous, they may like laugh. Because um, I'm kind of feeling that. But everything feels good. And let's just talk about the King of Wands before we move on. Because the King of Wands, to me, is someone who, who puts action behind their words. So... Let's say these two end up falling in love, which I have a feeling they will. Um, this is someone who will show you that, right? Like, I'll tell you I love you, but then I'll also show you that I love you. How could they not? Because, again, I feel the empathy within them. I feel I feel the, like a loving person. Doesn't mean they're perfect, but nobody's perfect. You know, when it says very soon, well, that Ace of Wands, inspired action, inspired steps to take. You listen with that Two of Wands. You're listening. 
And that opens up this new chapter. And then lo and behold, I meet someone who's very similar to me. <laughs> um, you know, who does kind of feel like my match. And when I say me, I mean you. So let's just take one more down the middle. Hmm, look at this, the Eight of Pentacles. I'm definitely feeling like you both are in similar type of businesses. Eight of Pentacles, um, you know, this person goes into something new as the apprentice, but ultimately leaves as the master teacher. That's what I'm feeling in this Six of Wands. Like, I am the master teacher. I may not give myself that title. This also answers a question, you know, how do I know it'll be successful? How do I know it'll last? Well, the Eight of Wands says, wherever you put your focus, or I'm sorry, the Eight of Pentacles, wherever you put your focus is what you're going to grow. But listen, I feel like this is money and love, not just love, not just money, both of them. And maybe that's why I felt like there could also be great collaboration here. Yeah, I feel like I have two master teachers on the table right now. So I feel like the biggest thing here is to let go of the worry. Um, make sure that you're open. You know, if you're looking for love, if you're looking for love. But listen, even if I'm not looking for love, I still feel like this is going to show. And I feel you're ready for it. I do feel you're ready for it. And, you know, if you're uncertain, to me, the two of wands means just taking a step into it. But again, coming over the world, to me, the world means probably for the rest of your life. It's a very spiritual type energy. Um, you know, it's where I feel like you're walking hand in hand with your spirituality. I have a feeling both of you have some type of spiritual um, business or you work in a spiritual field. And I definitely feel that it's something similar to what you did in a past life, because that's the wisdom that you're extracting. It's almost like your guides put a subject before you and it piques your interest and you can't help but want to learn more and more and more. And I feel the same thing for them. So a lot of similarities between these two. Um, also, this is not about someone I feel that would be hard to get to know. And for those who have been in relationships where someone has held back their emotions, their feelings, how they feel about you, I feel the opposite here. Now, again, taking a step into it, but then just allowing the energy to like envelop you. I feel the rest will just take care of itself. But the last thing I want to say is I definitely feel there could be great collaboration here. All right, let's take Mother Mary. Let's do one Mother Mary. Or whatever, you know, I say one, but whatever wants to come out. You know, it's interesting because we have Virgo on the table. We also have Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. I felt something about June or July. We have Truth. I am lovingly honest with myself and others. We have mercy. I am kind and thoughtful towards myself and others. And then faith, my granddaughter's name. I have faith in God to heal this situation. Truth, mercy, and faith. Oops. Okay, 
All right, I think I'm going to let that one be. Um, but I have a feeling this is one of those, one of the readings that it's going to move forward. So I wouldn't be surprised if for those who picked one, there may be another number you also picked. Um, and I'm just trying to see, is there anything else I can tell you? Um, you know, I just, I really feel the energy of past lives here. And I feel like the only thing is just, you know, trying not to control. Let me put it this way. Put those, if this is something you're interested in, put those seeds of intention out there. Because I feel like very quickly they'll be answered. It's almost like your spirit guides are waiting for you to say, okay, okay, I'm ready. But I feel like this person, and probably both people here, you know, having their their career in place was also important to them. You know, I, I like I'm saying, I don't feel like this person is coming to you broke. I feel like this person, their money is fine. I feel like they have that part of their life down. I don't even, I, I don't really feel any issues with this person. Because, again, I feel like they match your empathy and your compassion. And I feel like they are definitely going to bring, well, probably both of you are going to bring out the inner child within each other. And to me, that means the playfulness of it. And maybe that's why the two of wands, again, is saying, just take a step into it. But the world, to me, signifies probably for the rest of your life. Now, I have to say probably because free will is free will. So let go of that worry. Put your intentions out there. Some of you, you're having these dreams. You know, they may not make any sense right now. I would write them down because I feel they are also clues. And I feel like for some of you, your guides are like, well, that's, that's when we reach you because you are busy during the day. You know, your mind is preoccupied, so we're going to reach you at night. So that's why I feel like a dream journal would, would do very well here. Can we be successful? Can this be a love that lasts for a lifetime? Eight of Pentacles answers that question. If you put your focus on it, my dear, it will grow and grow and grow. And it is about success. Okay. Let's pick up one. Dun, dun, dun. And. Take a moment. Just clear our minds. And now we are going to move on to reading number two. All right. Psychic Tro brings out wisdom. Interesting. We had wisdom in the first reading. And now we have wisdom in this reading. That's probably why I said, I feel like for some of you, there's going to be more than one reading that resonates. Well, here's a wisdom. This is the Hierophant, Heart of Taurus. This is about your beliefs, your belief system, your morals. Are you living life according to your terms? You know, it is a five. So it may speak about a change that's coming up. And trusting within that change. All right. The good tarot brings out. Look at this. The two of wands. So already a lot of similarities between the first reading. And then we have another five. Faith. Well, that's also the Hierophant. Double Taurus on the board, by the way. Two fives. And in the middle of the two fives, 
which to me, again, five stands for a change, is the two of wands. And that is about a new path. I mean, double Taurus on the board. Wow. Past life. The arts. The arts. The light seers. Mm. Nine of swords. Look at the similarities, guys. And then look at this. The romance angels calling in your soulmate. Calling in your soulmate. Your prayers, affirmations, and visual, 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 uh, visualizing help bring you together. Interesting, I just answered someone's comment where I said, um, if I was you, I would visualize that this person is already in your life. So, And I literally just answered, I just wrote that before I did this reading. Calling in your soulmate. Faith, wisdom, you know, your prayers help bring you together, your affirmations. I know a lot of you are doing that. The only thing is that nine of swords that's coming below the two of wands, which would, to me would signify the, the next path. So interesting that I feel that you're also walking down the path of the wands. And, you know, that means inspired, inspiration, desire, passion, all of those things. But the Nine of Swords under that, again, that worry. Maybe I'm worried that, you know, the soulmate won't show. But it feels like it it is going to, sh like they are going to show. <clears throat> Calling in your soulmate right under faith. Do you believe it can be so? And it may be even asking you, are there any changes that you need to make in your life right now to help bring this about? I feel like the main change would be to let go of the worry. You know, it's like you're calling in your soulmate, but then worried of, are my prayers even being heard? Is anybody listening to my affirmations? And the answer is yes. The answer is yes. I feel like for some of you, this person is not that far away. And I mean physically. Like I feel. Um, they could be like in the same neighborhood. The same town. Or the same state. I don't feel that they're far away. And then I feel like. One of the connections. Between the two of you. Would be the art. So for me. The person in this reading is doing something in like in the arts field doesn't have to mean I'm doing it for a living but it may be how we connect you know like like maybe I love music which I do and I go out and I listen to a band that I love and um lo and behold I meet someone You know, and I'm just using that as an example because now I see someone painting. Like, I may decide to go and take some type of class um, that has something to do with the arts. And this may be where that person is also going to be. So I feel like the Nine of Swords is the only energy that really isn't serving you. Let's go ahead and bring the Gilded Tarot in. You know, for some of you, I can't help think, but that it may be a Taurus with double Taurus on the board. We have the Page of Cups coming over Wisdom. 
Um, I have to just tell you what it makes me feel like is there's something when I was younger that maybe I always wanted to do. Um, you know, like for an example, uh, like many of you know the story of how, I don't know if you can see, can't really see it. Let me bring that over. Like the guitar in the corner, how it showed up for me. And it's something I always want to learn how to play anyway. Um, so anyways, what, I, what I feel is like, well, I'm learning something, you know, or taking that class, um, though, I don't even feel like we have to be taking a class together. I just feel like there's something about the arts that's connecting the two of you. We have the seven of wands. We have the three of wands over the second hierophant. We have the five of wands. Interesting. Look at all the wands. We have the tower over the nine of swords. And there's where your fear lies. That tells me that who's ever in this reading, that love may not have gone great for you in the past. But you haven't met this person yet. You know, I find it interesting because I feel like there's a lot of resistance here. Um, so even if I'm calling in my soulmate, I'm also putting a lot of resistance out into the universe. It's almost like, like I'm putting those affirmations out there that, you know, I'm ready for my soulmate. But everything, it's like your inner self is fighting that for some reason. Well, I know why. I feel like it has to do with past love you know, past love that didn't go right. And, you know, it happens to all of us. I also feel that I want to try to let go of exactly how someone must be when they come in. Because this soulmate may be very different than what you expect. Probably someone different than, you know, as it relates to love. It definitely feels like if I allow myself, well, I feel like I need to think about my own vibration here a little bit. Because even though I want a soulmate to come in, I am also being resistant to that. So it may just simply say there's still some energy that needs to be cleared. <laughs> Because otherwise, I feel like I may be a little aggressive. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like someone comes in and I may be like, well, how do I know? You know, you say that you like me and you want to go out with me, but I just feel like I don't believe it. But that's coming from you. And I mean that in the most loving of ways. You know, to me, it just means that a past energy hasn't been cleared yet. I feel like um, it's talking about your inner child. You know, like you've been through something definitely difficult. And, you know, where did you take the brunt of the pain, let's say, in the inner child? Two fives, two changes. I feel like one of the changes is you. Because again, the Nine of Swords with the tower over it, I'm more worried that whoever comes in next is just going to result in a tower again. So I got to think about what I'm thinking about. And what do I mean by that? Well, I think we have to understand that not all people are alike. And we have to think about where our own vibration is at. Because right now with the Nine of Swords and the Tower over it, and this aggressive energy, the Seven of Wands standing my ground, the Five of Wands, drama. Um, you know, and to me that feels like past energy. Because the Tower feels like it ended it. But in a way... I feel like that's a good thing. Now, I know some of you are going to be like, but I didn't want it to end. Well, a lot of times 
a relationship will end that maybe we think we don't want it to end. And with time, because I definitely feel like there needs to be clearing of the past so that I can truly appreciate what is next. So what is next? We look at the three of wands over the Hierophant again, but it says faith with this card. Three of wands is about living in the present moment. It's kind of like the fool's energy. You know, it's an optimistic energy. It is believing. You know, it's believing in a higher power. And believe, and if you believe in that higher power, higher power, then you got to know that a ship can come in at any time. You know, the one thing I feel like we can't plan is love. Let's just take one over calling in your soulmate. Look at this, the Ace of Swords. This feels to be the one. You know, the Ace of Swords to me is my yes card. Um, but it's also truth, integrity. Some of you could have certainly been dealing with someone who didn't have integrity, who did not speak the truth. And, uh, you know, I just honestly feel that without the clearing of the past, it doesn't mean that this steel won't come in, but it comes, it, it, it has a whole different light to it. So it could still make me feel good inside, but then the fear is going to raise its ugly head. You know, another way of looking at this is, let's say you, well, I mean, it definitely looks like you were in a past relationship where there was a lot of drama, maybe even a lot of fighting. Um, and then, you know, whether the universe ended it, whether, you know, you ended it or someone else ended it, really, I feel like this tower is doing you a favor. Even though I know when I say that and you're in a tower type energy, it's hard to hear that. But I do feel like that's the truth. Like, that's what I feel like I'm meant to tell you. Like, that is just the truth. You know, think about the law of attraction also. Where is my vibration? Because the universe is going to meet me right where I'm at. And the nine of swords with the tower... You know, I hate to say it's a lower vibration, but it is a, it's it's a vibration where I'm not really trusting in divine energy, which I get it. You dealt with a lot. You definitely dealt with a lot. But this person doesn't feel anything like this last person. And for you, I would say if you're still in, like if the tower energy, which means some type of disruption in your life, some type of ending, um, to me the tower means someone fell from grace. What was I going to say? Um, oh, I feel like one of the things you can do to help you overcome past energy is to kind of get lost in some type of creative energy, the arts. You know what I mean? Like, um, like you often hear singers say, you know, or people who write songs, they're able to get out those feelings, like get them out and let them go. I feel like whoever it is that, again, was last, let's say, I don't feel like they were serving you or even serving your purpose. So the Three of Wands is asking you to consider changing your perspective. You know, consider keeping your heart open, even though Consider that there is a higher vibrational love out there 
but I myself need to bring my vibration. You know, I got to be what it is I want. If I can be loving, if I can believe that all is possible, then I feel like the universe is going to meet those expectations. Let's take one right between hmm, the Tower and the Seven of Wands. We have the Six of Wands. It's interesting because I do feel like this could have traveled from the last reading. But listen, this is about calling in a soulmate. So, and the Ace of Swords over that. To me, that means this is a true soulmate. This energy before could have been like a free will choice. You know, someone who just attracted me. I mean, I need to think about, think about when you're in relationships. Like, just look back at your own relationships, different relationships. And think about where your vibration was at, at the time of meeting this person. You know, was I in this energy of feeling unlovable? And then, lo and behold, the next person I fall in love with makes me feel even more unlovable. You know, your guides want you to know that that is a facade. You are very lovable. But at this moment, you're very resistant at the same time. So I feel like a change of vibration, a change of thought, and a change of belief will help bring in this soulmate that you're really calling for. Page of Cups is mirroring that Three of Wands. Again, that optimistic view. You know, the Three of Wands, the person there is saying, you know, I'm just going to live this present moment energy. Maybe I'm going to get lost in the arts. You know, whatever that may mean for you. And in the meantime, I'm just going to trust the universe to bring in, you know, my true love. I almost feel like the Knight of Pentacles needs to be out here. Um, and I'm saying that because the Knight of Pentacles is, you know, about something coming into your life at the right time. And I'm saying that because I feel like with the Nine of Swords, the Tower, Seven of Wands, the Five of Wands, it doesn't feel like the right time. Can you overcome this? The answer is yes. It's showing you overcoming it. It's showing you rising above it. All right. I want to take a card over here where there's that Ace of Pentacles, almost like the Knight of Pentacles, because the Knight of Pentacles brings you in this Ace. And this Ace means that something's coming into your physical world. It's meant to enhance your life, not deplete it. But it is a seed. So it's going to be up to me what I do with this seed. I can nurture it. You know, think about your garden. You know, I plant this garden. Well, you, you don't just walk away, right? You water it. You make sure it's getting enough sun. That's kind of what I feel like with the Ace of Pentacles. It's really going to be up to me what I do with this seed. And if I do nurture it, well, it's only going to blossom. Or I can let it dry up and die. So it's got me a little like back and forth. But I feel like the universe is saying to you, we will bring in this soulmate. But you do need to look at this. Let's just go on the other side of that. Look at that. The devil um, can represent a Capricorn, of course. But I feel like this is talking about, you know, the devil is about temptations. And... It could talk about, you know, someone's energy who was, you know, more than comfortable living in their lower vibrational energy. And it kind of brought me down to their vibration versus them rising up to mine, right? So I feel like what I've been fighting for really is not worth the fight. 
what I've been crying over, in a way, down the road, I'm going to understand that this tower was really my best friend. Because it's what's helping to usher in what's new. One more. Look at this. The lovers. Well, first of all, the lovers, the meaning of the card is a head over heart decision. And I do feel that here. Am I going to follow my head? Well, my head is kind of full of the past. Or am I going to follow my heart? And I feel like that means your heart chakra will be activated. Let's not forget, we do have the Ace of Pentacles. So it does mean it's coming into your physical world. It's interesting how I was picking up June or July and for the last reading. But I, but I don't mean like, you know, it won't be until then. Um, it just may be there's something about that date. And this is um, the card of Gemini. Which is June. Part of their birth month is June. But let me tell you what I feel about the lovers. To me, it's chemistry. And if you just look at the image, you can see the mask or the feminine, right? She's in her energy. But here's the masculine. And it's like he hasn't reached the feminine yet, but she can feel it. She feels that energy. She allows herself to feel it. So, you know, being completely honest here, I feel like either the past is going to hold me down, hold me back, or I'm going to let that go, let it be, and not put, you know, not be afraid of falling in love again. And I do feel like the chemistry is going to be very strong. You know, the Hierophant here twice, it could talk about two people who have similar morals, similar beliefs, could even have similar signs. But I feel like that is part of this, is trusting. Trusting in divine. And knowing that what was wasn't good for you anyway it could have taught you something and sometimes the lesson is simply i now know what i do not want i know what type of person that i want in my life but again i have to say i want to be what it is i want back over here I feel like lower vibration over here. I feel a higher vibration. Three of wands. It's almost like putting the ball in your court. <clears throat> hmm. Two aces together over calling in your soulmate. And then optimism above it. But. Also, living in the present moment. You know, why is it important to live in the present moment? Because that's where your signs are sent. That's how your guides reach you in the present moment, not in the past, not in the future. But it's like it's giving us a glimpse of the potential of your future. You know, I, I just simply feel like I'm either going to allow or I'm not. I'm either going to take the seed because I feel like no matter what, it's still coming in. I'm either going to take the seed, I'm going to love it and nurture it, or I'm not. So I feel like we need Mother Mary. Um, we have double Taurus on the board. We have Capricorn. We have Gemini. Um, but 
you know, what I say it doesn't have to mean it's that sign. So Mother Mary, okay, well that didn't take long. Look at this, signs. Sun, sun, everywhere, sun. I watch for, notice, and trust the signs that heaven continuously sends. I watch for, I notice, and trust. Well, the Hierophant is all about trust. And trust the signs that heaven continuously sends. So you're being guided. And then optimism. Well, that matches the three of wands. Listen, listen to this. I expect good things to happen, and they do. I expect good things to happen, and they do. It's like a change of thought. It's a change of belief. I simply feel it's understanding that sometimes we do get attracted to someone who, you know, could have promised us the world and delivered nothing. But we don't want to say to ourselves, well, then everyone must be like that. Instead, I feel like the best course of action to take here is to find a way to let that go and get back into like at least the present moment. Even if you don't have a hundred percent belief yet, still, if you live in the present moment, the signs, they're going to guide you. They're going to guide you. And you have these two aces right here over calling in your soulmate. So they're going to guide you to this soulmate and they're going to guide your soulmate to you. I wouldn't be surprised again if the art has something to do with it. But I also feel for you that one of one of the ways that you can help heal yourself is through the arts. And again, I mean that in many different ways. Just something that makes your inner child happy. Probably something that you, um, you know, it's going to say you're already good at, but maybe it's you're just learning. Optimism. Signs. I expect good things to happen, and they do. Over here, I expect bad things to happen, and they do. That's why I have to clear that energy. And I have to say, I feel like once this energy enters, then you'll be able to look back one day and say, okay, now I understand. Now I get it. There's something I probably learned in this energy. And again, sometimes it's simply what I don't want. But I also feel like you must have learned how to read energy at the same time. So. Optimism. It's contagious. Signs. You know, it's your optimism that brings in these aces. But the signs are what's going to help guide you. Again, inspired action. But not just you. Both people. <clears throat> so, will I or won't I? I feel like I'm kind of leaving this spread with a question mark. Will I or won't I? You know, the universe is like, yes, we want to help bring you in this love. Yes, we do want you to be with someone who um, is going to love you completely and you them. But we also know that if you don't clear the past energy, you know, it's not that we're going to stop love from coming in, but it's just going to look different to you. You know what I mean? Like, again, you may take that seed and just let it dry up and die, which is your choice. But because I feel like you're calling in your soulmate, then you, you are looking for, you know, well, first of all, I feel like a higher vibrational love. 
And that is why optimism keeps coming out. Because if you're optimistic about your future, well, so are your guides. And again, these signs to me that's being sent by Mother Mary is a sign of, you know, it's a sense of comfort. It's a sense of knowing that heaven does care for me. That my spirit guides, my angels, they do care about me. And they do want to help me to manifest, you know, the best in my life. But I also have to understand that sometimes there are lessons I need to go through. And it could simply be so simple as now I know. You know, now I know that I lowered my vibration to be with another and it produced nothing. It produced drama, fighting. But if I can let that go and raise my own vibration and simply I feel like by letting that go, that raises your vibration. If I expect good things to happen, then they do. Listen, they come in as seeds because it's really up to you what you're going to do with them. But I feel the potential is off the charts. You know, is it a soulmate? It's a soulmate. You know, this could have been a soulmate also because there's different levels to love. And some soulmates come in really to teach us and us them. But in the Nine of Swords, we don't always know that. Remember the Nine of Swords speaks about unnecessary worry. But to me, it means that I need to clear the past so that I can be free and clear to accept what's next. Okay, well, that one was a little bit more difficult, but, you know, it's like, it's like turning the page, turning the page and then watching what opens up, believing, you know, the higher than twice, believing. I mean, why, why can't you have great love in your life? You know, you can. And I feel it's important that you tell yourself that, right? That you are lovable, even if the last person you were with made you feel anything other than that. That was them. All right. Last. But certainly not least, number three. All right, the psychic trail, the Empress. The good trail, the seven of cups. Mm, a decision, an emotional decision. Look at this. Troy of dreams, the knight of cups, unexpected cup of fulfillment. Looking right back at the Empress, well, spouse in a past life, in a past life, you were married. In a past life, you loved each other. The devil under the seven of cups, card of Capricorn. Look at this past life relationship. Well, not only does it say past life, but it says a relationship. You have known each other before. Well, do I feel that? Especially it mirroring the past life of spouse, marriage. And then this past life relationship has the Knight of Cups right above it. Unexpected Cup of Fulfillment. Interesting that it has to travel through the Seven of Cups first to reach the Empress. Or, you know, I'm saying to reach the 
Oh, train just went by. We'll let that train go by. All right, if you guys can hear, I often feel when a train goes by, it's your spirit. It's our spiritual teams, like waving to us, saying hello. Okay, back to the reading. So, um, first of all, when the emperor shows up, I'm not too worried about whether, you know, first of all, it, it's a personal choice whether you say yes or no. But if I'm looking for love, you know, or I'm open, let's just say I'm open to love. I don't have to be looking for love. Because honestly, I feel like love comes in the most unexpected of times, in the most unexpected of ways. And that's exactly what it's showing here. So that Knight of Cups, it's, you know, it's unexpected, but it's coming in and it's looking right into the reading. So I feel like the Empress is simply saying, you know, do I want to add love into my life? You know, you have the devil down here, um, which again can talk about temptations. And that may be why the Seven of Cups is here. Seven of Cups is like trying to make a decision. The energy can feel chaotic at the time. You know, they could talk about this coming in during a chaotic time in your life, a period. Um, but that's not going to stop it. Um, you know, it's interesting because I feel like the Empress, she'll pretty easily make a decision. And I kind of feel like the Empress will, if she doesn't already know, like as this moves towards her, She's going to feel the energy of the past lives together. I mean, definitely it's showing that you were married in a past life. You had a real true commitment in a past life. You know, and I feel sometimes in the Empress's energy, because if you think about the Empress, you know, she's had, she's gone through a lot. Again, I do feel like the Empress has walked the walk of all the queens. And, you know, that means the good, the bad, the ugly. But this is someone who rises above that. You know, this is someone who's like, okay, I get it. You know, these past experiences, they were teaching me. And because I'm open to that type of learning, it just naturally means your vibration is higher. You know, I want to be careful because I keep talking about your vibration. And I know people worry about that. How do I know if I'm in a lower vibration? Well, I feel like one of the ways you can tell is how you're just thinking about the present moment moving forward. You know, I'm just trying to look at the devil's energy to see if... <clears throat> this is talking about a lower vibrational energy. Um, but here's the thing with the Empress. She would know it very quickly. Like she can read people's energy very quickly. And as, you know, love starts moving towards her, if it's no good for her, she's going to know it right off the bat. And that is because she trusts her intuition. She does trust the signs that the universe sends you know, her, her heart chakra is being activated, I just realized. Um, but what I was saying about, like, her experiences, you know, sometimes I feel like this is the best time to really fall in love when I'm in the Empress's, male or female, by the way, when I'm in that energy. Because this is energy where, again, I'm loving, I'm nurturing. Um, I've learned not to close my heart down. I've learned how to read energy instead of closing my heart down. You know, if someone of a lower vibration comes comes towards the Empress and makes any type of proposal, she's going to say no. 
She's just going to know the difference. And she's going to trust that. I have a feeling these two may be getting married again in this lifetime. Now, I know I'm jumping the gun a little bit. But I feel like that. Because past life relationship is mirroring spouse. All right. Let's take the guilty churro. Over this. Well, hello, Ten of Cups. Hello, House of Harmony. Love. Laughter. Joy. Some of you, this could be someone you're starting a family with. But it could also talk about blended families. And it feels kind of seamless. Look at that, the Seven of Cups over the Seven of Cups. Interesting. It, you know, interesting because, again, this feels like this is more about divine that's connecting people together. And both may be a little bit of like, huh? Could this person be? Have I known them before? Like, I feel this this um, familiar, uh, familiar energy with them. Why is that? I feel like a lot of questions come up. But I also want to say seven to me is a very spiritual number. We have the Five of Swords. We have the Page of Swords. We have the Sun. Beautiful. You know, the Sun coming over the Devil, I'll tell you what that means. What's ever done in the dark will come to the light. And then, look at this, the Four of Swords. Over past life relationship. Healing. But, you know, do I feel like um, this is healing a past life relationship. I don't because I feel like the past life was pretty loving. I feel like what it's doing is helping these um, soulmates help heal each other for this lifetime. You know, again, I'm feeling similar energies of, and it only makes sense to me because I do feel like soulmates could even be a twin flame here. Um, I do feel like they have a lot of experiences that are very similar. Doesn't have to be exactly the same, but to me, it means that <clears throat> I have a feeling that two people here were married to other people in this lifetime. And I do feel like there was a divorce or, you know, it doesn't have to be a marriage, but definitely in a committed relationship. I feel like that's ended. I feel like that did go to a toxic place. And that may be the only reason why I put a question mark, you know, whether I'm going to accept this cup that's coming in. Because again, let's not forget the Empress. She's learned, oh, got a bug in front of me. She's learned how to keep that heart open. Interesting, I feel the Page of Swords may be how this comes about. It could be through some type of communication. Um, it could be written communication. What I mean about that is like on social media where, you know, maybe you make a post and out of the blue, someone likes it or comments on it and you're like, well, well who are you? Um, I love how each is helping to heal the other 
from the stresses of this lifetime. You know, I feel like both of these lovers have dealt with toxic people in the past. But listen, remember the Empress. She doesn't shut her heart down. But listen, it was not overnight. It it takes a time to get to the Empress's energy. I feel like we all carry that energy. It's just reaching that energy. I love that she has a Ten of Cups over her. So that tells me that this Knight of Cups coming in ultimately has the potential of reaching the Ten of Cups. And that's what I would want. And I can't help but think that these two, you know, I want to say are going to get married. Uh, but let's just say they're going to be in a committed relationship. And I do feel like this is this will be for the rest of your lives. I also love that the sun is here. Because when the sun comes out in any reading, it's the illuminator. So, again, if I have any question as this starts moving towards me, is it going to be good for me? The sun will, again, illuminate that. And, and if, you know, listen, the sun, if there, anything done in the dark will come to the light. And that's that. I kind of love, even though, you know, when I think of the Empress, I don't feel like this is someone who needs a whole lot of healing because I feel like she's learned, you know, how to clear energy, how to close doors, you know, um, how to let new chapters open up. Don't forget the Empress, loving, nurturing, creative, receives epiphanies and pays attention to those epiphanies, signs. And she follows those signs. Why? Because she's learned that. This is someone who is, says to someone of the past, I am not going to let you affect my future. You know, the second reading could learn from this reading. And it can even be the evolution of someone, you know, from the second reading into this reading. All right, what do I want to... Let's just take a card down here with the King of Swords. And then, hello, Ace of Cups. Hello, love. So that Knight of Cups, right? Unexpected couple fulfillment. Well, literally, here now is that Ace of Cups. So, love. And I also love that just the way the cards are falling, that Ace of Cups is over the Four of Swords but also past life relationship. You know, it's like a love that never died. You know, we may have died in a previous lifetime, but this, this is eternal. King of Swords can represent Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. You know, it's interesting. We have the Page of Swords and now we have the King of Swords. Some of you may already know who this person is. Doesn't doesn't mean you're in a relationship with them. Um, the King of Swords to me, other than being an air sign, to me represents integrity, which I feel is important for the Empress. Like, you know, if you have no integrity, then I'm not your I'm not your person. The King is a great communicator. And I feel like one of the conversations, because let's not forget the Ace of Cups is here and the Sun. So I feel like part of the communication is really figuring out that, oh my God, we had a past life together. We loved in a past life. We were married in a past life. And here we are in this life. You know, I don't feel like this was someone who comes in early in life. Now, you could have met them early in life, but 
I really feel like this is talking about, you know, as I'm going through, as I'm learning, you know, and going through different situations in life, I feel like there's been chapters that have been open and chapters that have been closed. Um, but again, this feels like probably the last chapter as it relates to love. And I feel like if there's any little broken pieces left, you're going to help heal each other. Like, I feel like this is a beautiful love story. Like, I could write a book just on this reading alone. Because I'm feeling the past lives. I'm feeling the experiences within this lifetime. And then this love entering in is like, wow. Hmm. King of Swords. Um, I think it's important that the Empress be with someone who does have integrity. I think it's important for this Empress to be with someone where communication flows. So the King of Swords seems to be the right king to show up at this time. Again, it doesn't have to mean it's an air sign. You know, I definitely feel like, in a way, I feel like this page is a past life and the king is this current life. So I just want to see and take one card on how six of pentacles. Wow. You know, that really talks about the Empress's energy because in the six of pentacles, this is definitely someone who wants to help others. This is someone who's got a compassionate, um, empathetic soul. And that's what the Empress has. Um, this is someone who loves helping others. Now, I could have, you know, it could have been a fault in the beginning, you know, where I was giving these hands out, but it wasn't helping someone. It was just, you know, like someone would take and take. Um, and the Empress is a giver. But maybe I had to learn, you know, who to give my love to. Who deserved it? And who doesn't? Who abuses what I give? I feel like one of the lessons here was simply that, you know, maybe um, both of them have been, because I feel like both of them have been in previous relationships in this life where there was some toxicity and that could also represent what the devil was here right it could be you know temptations tempted to this lower vibrational energy you know and then i feel like this lower vibrational energy it, what it means is sometimes people come in and they just they promise you the world but then really deliver none of it you know what I mean? They're charming. Um, like, just how this devil looking at me, like he's got his hand out, like wants me to grab his hand, wants to pull me in. But with the sun over that, it's like, I see you. I see you for who you are. And sorry, Capricorn. For some of you, it's it, it could just be a Capricorn. You know, I've been working on doing my own tarot cards. I've been do, working on it for at least a year. Um, and the devil is one of the energies I am changing. I don't even know if I'm going to call them tarot. They may just be called storytelling. But look at this, guys. Past life relationship. You were married in a past life. 
this love, this Ace of Cups, unconditional love, you know, wasn't just the love of one lifetime. It's this lifetime too. And this Ace, I mean, this Knight of Cups, which again is unexpected couple fulfillment. Well, literally fulfills its wish or fulfills what it says it's bringing in. Coming right into the Empress that turns into the Ten of Cups. Well, to me, that feels like, okay, we're reconnecting and recommitting. All right, let's take Mother Mary over this. Oh, I don't know why all of a sudden I decided to give him a cut. You know, it's beautiful that you have the sun right next to this Ace of Cups. To me, that means it's going to be very clear. And again, the Empress, like, I, I just feel like once I reach that status, and it doesn't matter what age you are, it's just like I'm learning from my past experiences. I'm not letting them hold me down. I'm just learning from them. You know, I feel like the Empress knows that not every love is going to be a lifetime. But because, again, she's learned how not to shut down her own energy. And she trusts her energy as a measure of when something comes towards her. She knows pretty quickly. Oh, no, you're of a layer of vibration. Been there, done that. But this is anything other than that. The sun with that ace of cups. Well, that's a high vibrational love. It's a love that's meant to be. We have Jesus. I pray for Jesus' help and guidance with this situation. And then we have integrity. Interesting, because that's what I felt with the king. Integrity. I trust my ability to know what is true for me. That's the empress. That's exactly what she does. She trusts her ability to know what is true and what is not true. What is good? What is not good? And the only way that she can do this is because she has learned from her past experiences. She's learned not to shut her heart down. Doesn't mean, again, that like I'm out there seeking. <clears throat> you know, it was reading number two where you were calling in your soulmate. And I do feel like that happens in reading number two. But this reading feels like it's just predestined. Like it's something that's coming in at the right time. I don't feel like you're shutting this down at all. And I feel like through communication, um, somehow, some way, you're going to figure out that you were together before in a past life and that you loved you know, this feels like an unconditional type of love that, well, it's eternal. You know, you, you know each other. You know each other's soul. When you leave this earth, you're going to know each other in heaven. You know, I feel like prayers are being answered. But I also feel like this it, this feels like divine timing to me. This feels predestined to me. And I, as the Empress, you know, there are things that, other things that my soul wanted to accomplish, maybe before I ultimately fall in real love. And I'm not saying past, you know, relationships didn't consist of love. But again, there's different levels to love. You gave yourselves to each other in a previous life. And I feel you're going to do the same in this lifetime. 
predestined. Like, I just have no doubt about that. I trust my ability to know what is true for me. So, as this Ace of Cups comes in, and it is, and it has the ultimate um, ability to turn into the Ten of Cups, if I allow. Then I feel like this is the rest of your life. This is the rest of your life. This just feels like this is destiny speaking to you. Like this is your destined time. You know, it's interesting because Capricorn is here and um, part of me is wondering if this is something that's going to happen around the Capricorn energy. You know, so that would be what? December into January. I wouldn't be surprised. And I feel like another little clue is both of you might have a lot going on at that time, well, you know, that's the holiday season. Um, and that may be the only thing, and I don't even want to say a negative thing, it may be the only thing that um, puts a little hiccup in it, like, you know, can I, is this going to fit in my life right now? I feel like the answer is yes. And also, this Knight of Cups, this unexpected cup of fulfillment, which again is delivered because we have the Ace of Cups, we do have the Five of Swords over that. And to me, any five speaks about a change. So it does talk about previous toxic energy. But then you have the Four of Swords right underneath that. So I feel like if there's any toxicity that still remains, uh, and I don't feel like you know each other, um, not in this lifetime. Uh, you know, I shouldn't have said that. Because maybe you have met earlier in life, but this feels like the right time now. And I love how you help heal each other. That just makes sense. That's what soulmates do. You know, if we're not teaching, then we're healing. And it makes sense that the Ten of Cups would come over the Empress. Because the Empress is someone who will definitely accept that Ace of Cups. You know, again, because it's coming in the light. If it was coming in the dark, then she would not accept it. But it's coming in the light. Mm, something's telling me to take one more card. We have the Nine of Wands. Okay, so the Nine of Wands to me, this may be, this may also signify um, like a time period because the Nine of Wands is, and it's perfect for the Empress. This is someone who's looked back at their life, um, at least let's say the last chapter, but probably all the different chapters because remember, we run in nine year cycles. Um, and this is someone who's really looked back to see, like, what have I learned? How have I grown? I call this person my spirit warrior because they're really busting out of their clothes from the spiritual muscles that they have gained. So even if sometimes life can feel hard, um, what am I learning? How am I growing because of it? You know, and I feel like that's tying back to that Five of Swords. Sometimes simply leaving it. But it's, it's appreciating who you are today. And it is your past experiences that make you who you are today. 
So, you know, think about that. You know, this could also talk about a cycle that is coming to an end or has just come to an end and a new cycle now beginning because the Ace of Cups, again, it's the beginning, right? But I feel like this is an energy that's going to move quickly. Why? Because we're going to recognize each other. Again, we're going, and it's not even about the recognition of like, hey, I know you. It's the recognition of each other's soul. It's like looking eye to eye and seeing each other's soul. And then I feel like the day will come where the realization of like, okay, this is not the first time we've been together. And it's probably not going to be the last time. But I did want to. I did want certain experiences before this came about. You know, I wanted to learn certain things. I wanted to evolve in my own life. And now sitting as the Empress, that means that you're ready. You're open to it. Now, everybody's got free will, so you can always say no. But I see no reason why I would say no here. (laughs) <laughs> and I don't even feel there's fear. You know what I mean? It's just simply, if I question it, I'm just simply questioning, is this something I want to add into my life right now? But I feel like it'd be hard to say no here. It would be hard to say no, because I feel like you're going to feel it. I feel like I just want to take one more. Look at this, the star, your hopes, your dreams, your wishes. You know, this person's completely naked. And to me, that represents being who I am. No need to wear any mask, right? I don't have to hide who I am. This is about manifesting a dream, but bringing it into your physical world. You know, the Empress knows that I work hand in hand with divine to bring about, you know, we have Jesus right here. So working hand in hand to bring about these wishes, these dreams, it feels again, predestined, but I don't know that, you know what I mean? Like we're born with amnesia, so we don't know that, but it still feels predestined. It's a wish coming true. It's a dream that jumps out of our dreams into our life. It is love. And not just of this lifetime. You know, something made me bring in the past life oracle. And now I get it. Um... And it's interesting because I have been doing a lot of love readings lately. Someone even wrote that. Um, and the last reading I just did was was soulmates. So some of you, this may be, you may, the two may um, tell you your story. Okay, let's let that be. Um, By the way, the star is also part of Aquarius, so I want to put that out there for those who, especially with the King of Swords right there. But again, normally I don't like to read the signs because I feel like we're a little bit of everything. Um, But I definitely feel like this person, again, has integrity, speaks the truth. I feel like conversation, deep conversation and maybe it's through the conversation that we help heal any any of those broken little pieces. And then I feel like the recognition of this past life. You know, I feel like as I start to move into this love, I just know that it's right. It feels different than probably anything I've been in, you know, and the Empress is probably loved. But this feels different. This feels... Like, there's just this knowing. You know, let me give you an example. I've been with people that I've loved, um, but still had a hard time trusting them. 
And then now I'm together with Sam, which, by the way, happened through the Knight of Cups energy that turned into the Ace of Cups. And do I think that we had that we loved in past lives? I do. Um, but what's my point? What was I going to tell you? Hmm. Oh, I know what I was going to say. So, you know, um, fear can always raise its ugly head. Um, and it did for me also. It took me quite, it took me five years of just having conversations on the phone. But I wouldn't, I don't regret that because I feel like the conversations were romantic. And that's what I'm feeling here, like deep, meaningful conversation. And it's through those conversations where I feel like, it is the realization that we have loved before. That we have loved before. And I feel blessed to be able to love you again. I feel blessed. All right. I'm going to leave it there, guys. Um, so, you know, those who picked one and two are probably no longer here. But again, I want to remind you that more than one reading may resonate. Um, I can see how some of them are kind of, you know, it's like moving forward. So, you know, if you pick more than one, don't even worry about it. And again, sometimes I feel like when I do these type of readings, all three tell one whole story. So if you're someone who doesn't mind watching longer, you know, a longer video, you may see the similarities between the three. It could be the evolution of, because here I feel like there's, an, you know, if there's any fear, I'll get beyond that. But it just feels right. So anyways, trust your own intuition. Um, some of you, I would say, watch the soulmate reading. It may resonate. But again, I have all kinds of love readings out there. And the reason why I do love a lot is because I know that not every reading is going to be for every person. So I try to do it so you can find your place within the readings. Um, I have a twin flame reading out there, which I thought was just out of this world. I mean, really, I just loved it. Um, I have a no contact. <clears throat> what else do I have? Oh, I don't know. There's a lot of them out there. Um, your monthlies are already done for October. So you may even want to see how it relates to your monthly reading. By the way, as, as I speak about monthly readings, don't forget to also check out at least your moon sign because your moon sign is the inner you. You know, the sun sign is what we show the world. And a lot of people check out their sun. But I feel like your moon and your rising are like that inner workings of you. Um, okay, I'm going to stop talking now and let that be. Um, thank you, guys. I love you guys. I hope you enjoyed this reading. You know, this is not one of my most popular readings. Um and I think it's just because it's called Pick a Card. But, it's, but I really love doing them because I feel like we get three readings in one. Three readings in one. So I can't wait to hear your comments. Let me know how it related to you. Um, let me know what you're feeling about it. You know, I can handle the truth. So don't be afraid of being truthful. And, you know, something is just telling me before I let you go where I do feel, again, the evolution of one moving into two, moving into this one. Because the Empress being the very first card, this is where my heart is now open. So as this knight moves towards me, which literally brought in that Ace of Cups, and you've been together before, you were married before, Um, I don't know. I don't know what I was going to say other than I can see the evolution of them. 
Okay, guys, I'm going to let that be. I love you. I thank you. I thank you in all the ways you support this channel, truly. Um, sharing the videos, I appreciate that. Um, I leave the videos ad-free because I don't want to interrupt. You know, I feel like I don't like the interruption of ads during a reading. Um, so I do leave them ad-free. So I thank you for your donations uh, because, again, leaving them ad-free does, you know, YouTube's always like, put ads in. You can make this much more. Put ads in. But I don't like ads in my videos. I want you to be able to just concentrate without having to get distracted by an ad. So thank you for those who donate. Thank you for those who share. Definitely thank you for your comments. They mean the world to me. And I read every single comment. And I do try to reply to every comment. It may just take me a while because I get a lot. But I read every single one of them. Um, you know, I do this because I love you. I do this because I do want to help. And I know sometimes love, it can look like love is coming in so easily. But I want you to understand again how in each reading, there are lessons. You know, I feel like there's lessons, then there's blessings. Lessons, then there's blessings. Our soul came into this lifetime to expand. And we expand through our experiences. So, and not all of them are meant to be just beautiful and roses. And some of them are difficult. But that's what gives our soul the most expansion. That's why we have to learn how to close chapters. That's why we're born with amnesia. Because even the hardships of our last lifetime, bringing them into this lifetime, though we can feel them sometimes. Um, you know what I mean? It's like a brand new start, like a, the full. But these two are just going to know. I feel like really all of them are going to know that they've been connected because I didn't bring out the past life readings, um, the cards. I, I had no intentions of bringing them out and it just kept going through my mind. Bring out past life, bring out past life. And so I did and now I get it. All right, guys. I love you. I thank you. I'll see you next time at our table. Bye-bye.